Yeah, here, 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 just vibes and just vibes and just vibes and right here about the whole evolution. You know, black people and evolution theory. You know, are we the black people evolution theory? And here with Ross Seymour right here. And i um, like to go over some of the reasonments and even just to keep, continue reasoning here. Just vibes and bro. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I see what you, uh, okay, I'm going to send this. I'm going to try to bring this okay, up. I you yeah, I see this, and so let me do this right here, and move it around to this particular um, this particular record I'm on. So we just vibes in about the whole evolution theory, and I know many of us have been led to believe like, oh, um, like like there is no evolution, or we might just buy into evolution theory, and we need to kind of distinguish you know, the truth from the, you know, from the folly, in the sense of, um, you want to begin off with where you began off right here? I'm going I'm to bring this picture, the picture you sent to me. I'm going I'm to bring it up so we can put this on the screen. I think it just, it just actually came on right there. Let's save this here. And yeah, I, I got this here. So I'll, I'll, people are seeing the screen go around. Yes, I. Yeah, like it, um, it was reasoning, and part of this reasoning came out of a book that I um, am in possession of called The Last Two Million Years. And we start um, reasoning and sorting different things as far as creation and time and how things have came to be. And evolution is one of the things that came up. And we remember, uh, especially people of a certain age, you know, our age group and generation, we could remember when we are in school as a young age and they brought this Darwinism evolution theory of man um, like evolving from apes into the school system and in those days it was more of a I would say had a racial connotation to it as far as basically saying that um, it was black people was the one that was evolving from apes and they were the godly people and in time there are certain narratives that has probably changed and you know some have the views you know that they would prefer to see in these times and times to come they would probably prefer to say that they came from evolved from apes than they even ac accept the fact that they came from the you know the black you know the black matriarch and patriarch you know of, of like you know like of creation so we have to look at this um this evolution word definition meaning you know what has took place as far as in evolution and what has not some things um fit the evolution paradigm and some does not and like you know like the virgin rasa Dana say if you look in the scriptures you see like evolution itself is spoke about in there so it's something that we have to look into and dig it out for ourselves and see what we come out with not based on what um, other people have written over the years with bias or malintent or racial connotations you know to see evolution for you know for what it is and what it has took place and that we can see for ourselves certain things you know we wasn't here six thousand years ago or two million years ago to verify certain things you know but some of us are of the belief that um, the time frame that has been put here for us to judge things on and, and make decisions on is even a time frame that is so way off that we kind of have to look at that itself in its way as far as how evolution has took place from the creation of time because remember it was void <laughs> without form at one point strictly water mm. yes sir i i i yes sir yes sir give thanks to us give thanks Ross seymour right there 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 yeah i got the book i was able the people probably were seeing you know on the video side of the just vibes in here we was trying to move the picture that you sent on the whatsapp move it over here on this um record device here for the vlog and ones can see the page i have the page 
the same page that you took a, a snapshot of, of yes, the sir. book. Um, just describe the book for a moment for the people so the people can know this book. Maybe they can get a copy of it. Um, two million years first to me. Yeah, the book is called um, The Last Two Million Years. The Last Two Million Years. Sorry, I was about to say yeah. that. I was, I was saying the first two million. Go through. No, the, last, <laughs> the last two million years. So basically, if it says the last two million years, that means there's something before because there's always something before the last. Now, according to this book, it basically is given a, a time frame of 47 thousand no, 47 excuse me 47,000 million years so 4,700 million years 4,700 million years ago is where this book starts off so you might have some people who have a problem with that time frame and believe nothing goes so but like I said in the reasoning you know that we've been here in time to confirm that mm. Mm, mm, mm. So, since we just vibes in let me reason on these things um Yes. Evolution in itself, if we're going to speak about evolution, we have to accept the fact that there's a beginning of things and throughout time, based on environment, climate, and things that go on on the earth, certain things evolve to adapt. To what was going on mm. and if you understand evolution you understand adaptation <laughs> oh oh it, so the floor is yours my lad yes i yes i know no, no give thanks for um you know once again here for the just vibes and re-articulating re the context of what we were reasoning because we, we, was, we was still in the reasoning and as we was in the reasoning i think it began off when we was talking about um the apes and the monkey and the difference between apes and monkey and how it's like popularized that like man came from monkeys but actually according to their theory it's more about apes and apes and monkeys are similar but how they are not the same you know so it was from one reason to the next reason and i mentioned to the brother that actually even recently more and more we want to bring this out so that we can truly like level up like come to a higher you know conscious the higher manifestation and you know to create that 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 true you know kingdom you know we could say that kingdom of heaven proverbially speaking you know that ideal situation on earth only can begin with us even evolving right spiritually or psycho spiritually and how the bible speaks of spiritual psycho spiritual evolution a lot of times people talk about spiritual and that's the spirit but what about the soul the psychological state you know what i mean this is like the non-material aspects of us you know it's not you know no man has really seen his soul uh, you know what i mean what do your soul look like no man has seen his spirit you know like nobody really sees their breath except maybe if it's really cold outside you know what i'm saying and they see the frost, but they still don't see their breath. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. these aspects are invisible, are not seen. You know, to the to the pseudoscience. This is for the pseudoscientists out there, right? Because they might go against the Bible or say the Bible's not scientific, but it all depends on the mind of the scientist. You know, and science basically means knowledge. We've gone through this before. The word for science is just a fancy you know, English word that comes from the Latin word that basically means knowledge, right? Now, there's different scientific um, formulas and principles that among different peer groups, you know, like, like we as brethren, just vibes in as Rastafari, there's sometimes certain code that we are on. There's a certain way we do things. So even there, are, there's the modern scientists that do things in a certain way to help them prove or disprove various different theories you know what i mean i think it's a it, it's a matter of testing and verification you can look up i think it's called like the scientific you know um process you know what i mean but these processes whether it's in the lab or called science or whether it is something that we do to confirm like i can i can i can trust you 
but I may also, as I trust you, I want to verify. You say you're going to do such and such. Okay, all right. Now, if I see you do it, you, my trust in you, you know what I mean? It increases because to me, you kept your word. You know what I mean? Like if you borrow, if you borrow some money from me and you pay me back when you say, then you can come back and borrow, you know, the same money, you know, and if you borrow the same money and then you ask for some more, you know what I'm saying? And I can lend you some more. I probably am because your credit rating, you know what I mean? Because in other words, I trusted this, but then I verified, I put it to the, what they call it, put it to the test. You see what I'm saying? So we shouldn't go against science as people who might refer to in our various different ways the bible or truths in the bible or truths that we you know make a point of reference to the bible we don't want to get into people's theological or personal belief system right here because this is we got to look at this objectively you know and looking at this objectively did man evolve now let me look at the word itself let me look at the word itself evolution right evolution I have two different um, definitions right here, right? Evolution, first of all, it's unknown, right? The process by which different kinds of living organisms, organism, excuse me, are thought to have developed and diversified from earlier forms during the history of the earth. Now, that one is speaking about living organisms things that adapted through time based on climate circumstance or whatever right the second one now says the gradual development of something especially from a simple to a more complex form now if you over that right now right let me use the vehicle as an example if you go back to the 1920s, early 1920s, and look at the vehicles then that we was driving around them time, right? Before that was a horse and buggy. The horse and buggy is an evolution to the Ferrari right now. So we have to look at these two statements in, in depth when we're thinking about evolution because they got us trapped into a one-sided thing about evolution and not seeing the bigger picture of this evolution. Evolution. Mm, 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 mm. I, I, I just looked up evolution. I don't know like what the I was um, looking or referring to. What were you referring to? I just I just went to the Google right here, and I googled first evolution, then I googled evolution etymology, and in googling evolution <coughs> etymology, right, I um. I came to some interesting highlights in addition to what you just brought forward. But what you brought forward, where was that from? Was that a Google? Yeah. Okay, okay, let's just look at this right here for a moment because I got this on the screen. And um, um, is this is this the, the volume right there? Okay, let's see, hold on for a moment. Let me, let me put the... Evolution. Okay, let me try it again right here. Evolution. Okay. Okay, here we go. Evolution. There we go. There we go. I have to turn up the volume here. Yeah. So I have the evolution. So that's how you say it, y'all? Evolution. Okay, now now note this. When you look up, um, for one quick, you can Google or Google evolution and um, etymology. Evolution etymology. Or any word, really. To get to the etymology is like the true meaning, the original sense of the meaning. Then you can see how the word and words evolve. Words evolve also over time. So we have evolution, and the origin here, the Latin, it says evolvere, evolvere, evolvere. Latin, evolutio, evolutio. Then English, we get the word evolve. But no, look, notice what it means. From the English, it means unrolling. One or the other, follow along with this, unrolling. So evolution is unrolling. All right. Now it's kind of it's going to be kind of funny when we get to the real root of what evolution means, right? What evolution means, and you know how evolution often is uh, pinned to uh, what's his name Darwin, and we have to admit that we also pinned it to Darwin. And I want the eye to bring forward that example of what happened years ago, because we're of a certain, you know. Um, well, 
what they did was um, Darwin get a false rap from my studies. From what I, I come with, Darwin get a false rap. They pin this that this this thing called Darwinism, and a man who was basically putting out a feeler, you know, he was a, a you know was an educated man, scholar, and he just had a theory that he put out there for a feeler, and somebody took it up and run with it. It was not a point of view from my studies that he was making an argument that it's not something that he put his foot on that that was his actual belief so we have to realize that it's something somebody wrote and some other people take what he wrote and make it their gospel it wasn't his <laughs> so let me truth. check that out as well truth 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 right there you know I, I was about to tell you to tell you hold up for a moment because it's like it's like if i was telling a joke i I, you was about to take the punchline right there, but no, this contributes to it. So the punchline is still to come right here. Now notice we had to scroll out of the page a little bit so you can see the full of full here in the Google where it says evolution. This word comes into vogue early 17th century. So early 17th century would be like um, the 1600s, right? The 1600s would be the early, like the early 20th century would be like the 1900s. So in the early 17th century, the Latin word evolutio, evolutio, meant unrolling from the verb evolvere, to see evolve. Early senses related to movement first recorded in describing a wheeling, a wheeling maneuver. Now what I and I say? Even in the dance hall, oh, he just said, wheel, right? Wheeling, wow. <laughs> wheeling. Yeah, wheel it, wheel it. You know, a wheeling maneuver in the realignment of troops or ships. I want you to over this. So the first use of this idea, evolutio, evolutio, you know, from evolve, was used for movement, first recorded. First recorded, that means first record of it describing a wheeling maneuver in the realignment of troops or ships. Current senses, the current senses stem from a notion of opening out, giving rise to the sense, to the sense, the sense of development. And notice it, it has quotation marks around this, right? Then as you was reading out the definition or what you had before you right there, I scroll down and it said, what is the root word of evolution? So here it says, evolution comes from the Latin evolutio, evolutio, the stem of evolution. But here's what it means. Check this out. Quote, quote, quotation, unrolling a papyrus scroll. Uh-oh. Unrolling a papyrus scroll, like when we, you know, the black Jews of the line, the tribe of Judah, when we would speak about unrolling like the Torah scroll, a scroll, a roll scroll. You know, like you have a piece of paper and you roll it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> Unrolling a papyrus scroll, reading through. Reading, th knows what evolution is. Reading through an author's words or a book. So, so evolution, right, comes from the Latin word evolutio, evolutio, which meant unrolling a papyrus scroll, reading through. Like the, just a reading through, and what, re, what, are you, what are you reading through? An author's words or a book. The derivative of the verb evol, evolvere, to roll out or away, to unroll a papyrus scroll, to uncover, to unwrap, to unfold by using the intellect. Uh -oh. Evolution of the mind. Evolution of the mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like the word evolution after what? That was that was early, they say 17th century, the 16th, the what? The 1600s, 1619, remember? 1600s, 1619, 400 years, remember? So if it was in the early 1600s, now, when we talk about evolving, like, like I and I would say, yes, ironically, I and I is evolving. In the King of Kings Christ, in the in the tribe, I and I is evolving. Like growing, or we in a, in a in a theological sense, we could say, or biblical sense, growing in grace and the That's knowledge. Right. Notice what the Bible says, growing in grace and the knowledge, right, of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. I mentioned that because the word knowledge in the Greek is gnosis. And that's related to the Latin scientia or scientia. And that comes down to the English science, 
which all means knowledge. But notice that the root of evolution, the roots of evolution has to do with unrolling like, like, like a papyrus scroll, a reading. But it has a sense of, of unrolling, uncovering, unwrapping, like almost like an apocalypse, like a revelation, right? Unfold by using the intellect. Now, here's the punchline right here. They had a next one. Did the word evolution exist before Darwin? You know what I mean? And now we did beat up on Darwin a little bit because the way it was delivered to us. See, see, we were talking about how we as black people got to this evolution idea. It's not like today we're like in 2022 going in 2023, right? A whole new generation. The youths, many of the youths, they might hear about things from the past, but some of us live through that. Where in, in, in going to school, they presented evolution as a way of saying, see, I told you you was an N-word. You know what I mean? I told you you was an N-word. You know what I mean? And you are inferior. In other words, they use stereo racist stereotype against black people like we are, you know, monkeys. You know what I mean? Like we are monkeys and apes. You know what I mean? Derisive terms. You know, these these little peckerwood cracker and peckerwood insults. You know what I'm saying? Were used against us. So many of us... Are, Many of us of a certain age, our first encounter, and many of our elders, our parents, their first encounter with this idea of evolution was through a racist misappropriation, right, of what the man Darwin was all about. So what happened is that people were saying Darwin said it, so we began as black folks, you know what I'm saying? We began to look at Darwin as being a racist and he was trying to say that black people were inferior monkeys, apes, because this is how they took his research and flipped the script. You know how they flipped the script on the Darwin, when I say they, the inferiority known as so-called white supremacy. They used Darwin just like they used the Bible to justify what they did to melanated people and original earth people and people of color. But notice this right here, to Darwin's credit, that, that in other words, Darwin, in a sense, he was collateral. <laughs> Darwin, in a sense, he was almost like friendly fire. Many of us could say that our fire on Darwin, now that we have a better perspective of it, you know, because a lot of the youths today, the way y'all are receiving things is not with the same racist overtones and racial undertones that those of our generation and even our parents' parents' generation, right? But notice it says the word evolution wasn't quite used before Darwin. Check. The word evolution wasn't quite used before Darwin. They say, in fact, this has come from homework, homework.study.com. Go to homework.study.com. Did the word evolution exist before Charles Darwin's theory? And he said the word evolution wasn't quite used before Darwin. In fact, it wasn't even used by Darwin. Uh-oh. Oh. You heard that, bruh? Yes. Yes, I have heard that before. <laughs> it wasn't, in fact, and all y'all have to do right here, right? Now, we record this on the video. They may change up the Google. It's a private company. They may change things up. But if you go to evolution etymology, you see how we're scrolling on the page? Scroll on the page. You know how Google, and the people also ask questions. You know, what is the root of evolution? First question. And just to the second question here, did the word evolution exist before Darwin? And from homework.study.com, they say in the article, did the word evolution exist before Charles Darwin theory? The word evolution wasn't quite used before Darwin. We already find out that evolution was used like with a, like a military move of troops or of ships or of wheeling in some way. You know what I mean? Like turning around troops. But it says, in fact, it wasn't even used by Darwin. Darwin published his findings in a book called On the Origin of Species. On the Origin of Species, where he introduced the term, quote, descent descent with modification end quote it it is in later years that his findings were referred to as the theory of evolution it's like the bible says my curse be canaan but then the counterfeit christian says that ham was cursed 
and then they say, well, Canaan was a son of Ham, but they didn't say that Ham was cursed. Like, if, you, if your son is cursed, that don't mean that the father is cursed. But you, know, you need to understand Darwin's theory. Darwin's theory did not actually say that we came from apes. That's another they point. That in. Because what, da what Darwin's theory actually is, is that men and apes have a common ancestor. <laughs> that is his theory. And, and each man has a right to his own opinion. But that is his theory. His theory is that they both come from a common ancestor. And he was trying to find out, to the best of his ability, who that common, common ancestor is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they took it and ran with it and blamed he for version of his theory but they use his theory the crack of the European and we said the European between the time of um, Charles Darwin's theory right when he came out with his theory they use his research when when it was talking about the possible connection between the great ape and all of that and the chimpanzee and most people think that the chimpanzee and the ape is the same you know what I mean? And there's a big difference between the two. I want to heal up, um, it's going to be funny to some, but I want to heal up this brother named Ankh out there, you know, in the consciousness community out there. You know, though we disagree on some things, but he's he makes a good point for the need for scientific literacy amongst we as black people. You know, and even for a lot of people in the Bible, because a lot of people who reference the Bible also have been put into what they call it i call it intellectual balkanism you ever heard of balkanism yeah well in, or in the balkans out there in eastern i think europe somewhere like the slavic countries and blah 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 what happened is that what they do basically is they it's basically another form of of tribe versus tribe putting people in different blocks like i put you in a group so now you it's almost like what happens in the ghetto it's almost like blockism like, we're defending our block, but we don't own the block. But we're fighting and dying over real estate that we don't really own. You know what I mean? But it's a way of kind of dividing and conquer. So a lot of the biblical people, right, they go against the evolution thing. And then they go against Darwin thing, right? And they don't do due diligence. They don't get the knowledge. It's like the Bible says. They have a zeal for like God and righteousness, but they're going about it their own way in a very ignorant way, right? You know, because first of all, evolution, by doing a little research, wasn't even, the term was not Darwin's term, but his research was used. And his research was used at a time when it was highly overtly racial and racist, where white supremacy was, we could say, in its proverbial, historically speaking, heyday. And they were seeking to justify what they was doing to melanated black and brown peoples around the world. And since they already was, was um, uh, um, how you could say, um, slandering them, defaming them, mocking them, you know what I mean? Mockers and scoffing, you know, the melanation blackness and trying to liken black people to monkeys. You know what I mean? It's easier for them to, you know, to justify to the, the sympathetic amongst them that these things are justified because if you if you make us out to be coming from monkeys and apes and things to the sympathetic amongst themselves, the sympathy will soon, you know, leave. Although we ain't looking for no sympathy, but, you know, they're they going to still leave. True, true. The simple, yeah, the, the, um, the, the simps, you know, yeah. the... Yeah. You know, those who are the simps out there. And then you notice in a lot of the evolution models, how they always try to make the white man as something distinct. You notice that? You notice that? Right. It, and then they'll try to say that the earlier forms of so-called their, their theory of ever evolving from some monkey or great ape or whatnot like that, right, eventually leads to the so-called perfect white man. If you look at some of the some of some of the exhibits, I think the slides I showed you, I'm going through some of the slides. You can see on some of the slides that it goes from like the the chimpanzee and the ape and everything, and eventually leads to the white man. But yeah, then the I white man, that, that thing that they was trained trained back in the day with that pure pure white Aryan race. Exactly. 
because as some elders told me and I'm reasoning with the eyes a little earlier that the white man the so-called white man at that time preferred to say that he came from a, a, a chimpanzee a great ape than to say that he evolved from the black man right so this is what we're gonna pose is that really the truth of it is that this whole evolution theory and a lot of things got out of hand because of what the white man was seeking to justify his existence by this new thing he found called knowledge and science. See, it's the white man who newly found knowledge and science, you know what I mean? And in a sense was having a field day, you know, with this, you know, but he wanted to put forward, the evidence was pointing to from all the uh, archeology, span ancient Egypt, different places he was going, he was finding black people all over the place. Ancient I'm people. I'm still doing it and still finding it so he wanted to justify well where does he come into this equation other cultures have their history their mythology their antiquity but he himself was just ju just newly you know newly minted in a sense you know what i mean the newly minted so-called white man what was his origins other people the ancient egyptians the ancient sumerians other people they told you of their origins or what they believed to be their origins everybody else had their origins people the far east had ancient legends going back thousands of years but the so-called european the white man the latter-day greco-roman man and european man he didn't have such history but the evidence was pointing to that he was some sort of an evolution from the original man or the black man. But he didn't like that there. Because remember the same black man, original man, what was he doing to the original man, the black man? Why right? he had enslaved them in the Americas and the Caribbean and what he did around, you know, with Africa and Asia, you know what I mean, and all over the place. You know what I mean? Even destroying tribes of people like the Tasmanian people, almost eliminating them from 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 the whole family. But his big question was, where does he come from? So many of his own scholars were saying, well, you know, you come from the black, we come from black people. They go, no, 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 no. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, no, 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 no. Because in that sense, you know, like when they say, like, um, was it, it was a Francis Cress Wells thing? Well, her too, but it was um, Shahrazad Ali, who was it? No, Francis Cress Wells thing. The motherfucker or the original mother Ucka. You know what I mean? In other words, we use the term Mother Ucca, right? Now, for example, if Africa, and moreover than Africa, if the black woman has that mitochondrial DNA, you know what I mean? That DNA that basically is traceable through the mother's, you know, and through all human beings we can trace through the mother's lineage. You know what I'm saying? Yep. If that all is, the primary DNA is connected to what they would call an African or Ethiopian woman. A black woman, basically. You know what I mean? That means who is the original mother Ucca? You know? You know, you know who would be the original mother Ucca? Because we use the term, you know, mother mother Ucca. You know, people use that term a whole lot. You know, and especially even black folks, we somehow have evolved to that particular term because some say that term came out of enslavement and slavery where sometimes one was forced to have sexual intercourse with their own direct family relation sometimes even their own mother yeah it was a bad thing it's a bag over your head so you don't know who you like and you having sex with you know what i'm saying you know, having sex with your mother your sister you know like you have no clue because it's a bag over your head but it's it, a kind of, you know kind of perversion these people were dealing with and and not just that they were dealing with but they were forcing us to deal with their perversion because some things that they already was doing to themselves you know what I mean? In their own history. You know what I mean? Because the European history is not like the white man's history was not like other people's history. So over time, he has rewritten over these 400 years, he has sought to rewrite a lot of history. So this evolution theory kind of came in handy and still in a sense does come in handy because no one really is addressing the racial connotations, you know what I'm saying, that were pressed and pushed and how Darwin's theory was misused. So a lot of people have a kind of an anti, first of all, they're anti-evolution because they don't understand what the word really means, aside from the theory of evolution. And then they say that Darwin is the one with the theory of evolution. But actually, from those who have studied this, 
it's found out that he never even used the word evolution. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, like like when they say the they say they say they say the black man is cursed because they say the black man is cursed because of the Bible and that ham is cursed. You know, ham like Kemet and everything. But nowhere in the Bible does it say curse be ham. But the curse was actually on Canaan. But they run in the media and the public the curse of ham. So what I'm trying to say is that there's a pattern right here to this madness. You know, they try to say that evolution, oh, that's, that's Darwin. But then Darwin never used the word. They say, oh, ham is curse and ham is Egypt and Africa and the black man. But the Bible never said any curse on ham. It said on Canaan. And check this out. We know that the white man prefer to say he came from some great ape or monkey or whatnot like that or, or, or some, some god or alien or something like that. But the reality is, right, that his primary genes come from black people. So the white man actually evolved, right, from the black man with some modification. The Neanderthal genes that some white people have, well, that's been proven that that is not somehow the white man got that you know after he was evolving from us there must have been some other thing going on you know what i'm saying <laughs> you know but that has nothing to do with us right there but then this the two points go together evolution and the curse of canaan you know why because if the black people really were that they would have said it was a curse of canaan if you study history, it's already written, it's already documented, it can't change, so they try to change, rewrite history. But if you look at the historical document from the times, that they said the curse of Ham, right? Isn't it the curse of Ham? That's what they said. They said the curse of Ham, you know? I don't see the curse of Ham. But there's no curse of Ham. You know what I'm saying? They say evolution theory and Darwin, but Darwin never talked about evolution theory. Are you getting where I'm going with this? Yes. <laughs> because actually it would make more sense, right, that the Canaanite has more to do with the white so-called people. In some way that we don't maybe fully understand or we can't fully prove now, but just to point to the fact that the lie that... They say the cover-up is worse than the lie, right? The yes, lie is a lie. But the cover-up, the attempts to cover it up is worse than the lie. Because they try to cover up the lie. They lied, first of all, that the black man is cursed and therefore is worthy of this particular peculiar institution called slavery. You know what I mean? They lied about slavery, too. How they lie about slavery? Well, they try to say everybody has slaves and there were slaves in the past. While slavery was a peculiar institution created by this latter-day white man. He talks about it. Look up, everybody, look up slavery, peculiar institution. Those three words, slavery, peculiar institution. And, and you, you know what? This is not the video right here for it. But I was looking up and I found out that slavery was invented by the white man. The white man admits that he invented slavery. <laughs> it's admitted you know what I mean that slavery they even knew that when they started told the slavery thing that what they was doing was kind of like like when the bible talked about the last beast would be diverse from all the other beasts but it'll be a little bit of this a little bit of that a little bit of this you know what I'm saying and kind of yeah. mixed up in a kind of like a slavery gumbo a slavery loop. you know like taking all the worst things that people did that man did to man before and just adding all together and just making it worse but calling it by the new name slavery but whenever you say oh look slavery they will say well everybody has slaves you know how they, they like to do that right you know like like i'm wrong about something but then specifically y'all are on me about a specific wrong and then i try to say well everybody does something wrong you know like most i'm trying to shit most people don't have a clue right about what really the atrocities of slavery in the Western Hemisphere was. They got snippets and clips from movies and television shows. But if you go down to an in-depth study and find the writings and the things that actually happened to people in them days, then, you'd be horrified. Exactly. Totally horrified. 
of the behavior that was, I mean, put upon us. Now, if you study that and go back and study what what they call in slavery prior to that, this a total night and day. This thing was perpetual, generational slavery these people had going on. This has never been seen on the face of the earth before. Generational slavery. Mm. Your children's children's children is still slave. Mm-hmm. People need to look into this Western Hemisphere, this so-called Atlantic slave trade, so they call it. You know, I call it the, you know, refugees of war. Mm, mm, because mm. you didn't come over there and get no sleeve. You came over there and get human beings who are futures. Mm. Even you might get some captives. Them captives had a life. They could progress and prosper in that place where they live. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The children went to school with the other people children there. The children didn't turn out to be slave, um, like, like as you call slaves. It was not generational slavery going on. Mm-hmm. So when we try to equate what went on over here and try to say in history there were such things going on, you know, such thing, my lad. Mm, mm. Yeah, I have this page right here. In fact, I want to get off on, on this subject right here, but let's follow up on it because. Um, you know, sometimes they tell you the truth and you have to kind of like screenshot it, snapshot it, because when you go back for it, they might try to shift it up. But I well, found you know, a question. When we find them, we really don't go off topic, you know, because we're talking about evolution, right? <laughs> the evolution, yep, yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. And so. devolution, that means, listen, evolution <laughs> is the root. Evolution, okay. Once again, on evolution, we're going to return to this right here. People are seeing on the screen, we're on a slavery and peculiar institution, right? But we'll we'll get to that right there. But this is all connected right here, what the brother is saying about evolution. Because evolution is actually a root word, you know? It's the root word for, for revolution, right? Because you can't have a revolution without evolution. Think about it for a moment. Yes, sir. But now, as there's a revolution, there can also be a devolving. You can devolve. There can be a devolution, right? A devolution going backward, right? So notice, we had the theory of evolution. We had evolution, right? And the principle of evolving. And the true meaning of the word evolution, I think, is what is so important, right? Because the true meaning of evolution means that it is not anti-Bible as we have been made to believe. You know what I'm saying? It's not anti-Bible as we have been made to believe. You know, um, let's go right here. Yeah, yeah, ones are seeing this right here. Okay, because first of all, and Darwin was not the one responsible, but it was basically racist, so-called white racist, who used right the origin of species and what they can use out of his descent with modification and try to place himself as a so-called most so-called evolved species and then put the black people or melanated people into the category of like unevolved like when they talk about developed countries and undeveloped countries you see how they do that yeah. You know, so when they say that on one level, you'd be like, yeah, these other countries and Africa and Asia and South America, some places in the world, they need to develop. They're like so-called, they say third world countries. But even that right there is not divorce. It's connected with slavery, the peculiar institution. And it's also connected with how they fool people with this idea of the evolution thing. And it has a overtone or undertone of racism to it too you know what i'm saying because when they look at say africa and say well africa for example is not developed or some parts of asia or other parts of the world are not as developed or south america where black people are right in their in their unspoken thought they're saying this is from their racist so-called evolution theories you see what i'm saying 
that they themselves as a first world country are most evolved. That's why their countries are the way they are because they just are a higher superior species of people. You know what I'm saying? But now look at Africa. They are still living like apes and monkeys. You, you know what I'm saying? These two things are still connected until it's exposed. And so far, ones haven't really exposed it. You know, and hopefully this will help to expose, first of all, that Darwin, you know, like, never even used this word, this term. Others took his research and used the public ignorance. You know what I mean? Because it's a very scientific thing and it's not a thing that the average Joe or Jane, you know, back in the days, you know what I mean? Would be sitting down studying the origin of species. And then many of their racist church people, you, know, you, you follow where I'm going with this? Many of the yeah. racist church people therefore use what they got out of this um, remix, this bootleg version of what Darwin was really saying, you know what I mean? And then went in the Bible and started to connect the dots. Well, well, well if we are humans and they're supposed to be like humans, why are we so-called white people so much more evolved than them? Well, you remember the evolution? Some people just haven't evolved yet. But we can help them evolve and then they impose upon them their counterfeit Christianity. You, you know what I'm saying? Their white Anglo-Saxon. This is why even black people started to think, oh, when they were under that counterfeit Christianity that when they died, they'll be like Uncle Ru Ruckus. You know what I'm saying? You know, they would be able to be either like white in heaven, you know, like after their sinful black life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They will be pearly white <laughs> in heaven, and Wait, and, and that was a right? Uh -huh. When we talk about Darwin's writing, right? Based on his theory, right? You could see, based on how you interpret what his theory is and and, and, and how it's laid out, right? I'm looking at it like this: he doing his research, right? He started to study different primates and different species of animals right and and, and and life and see how they function in, in in their environment and most species do not use hands to survive to eat mm. you see what i'm saying so now if you study in that and you study in all these creatures that does not need a hand to eat. And then all of a sudden you get to these creatures who are more similar to us as human beings, who their hands are more vital to their survival, right? Where they would say, well, okay, these species evolve to where they start to stand up straight and the limbs get more limber and to where they could grab and break sticks and take stones to break off the shell and so these are things that these animals doing now which is the the monkey and the ape the gorilla them species you know even a squirrel is one of the first that they, they would probably would have seen to grab something with the hands uh you know mm. so by doing this research it says it seems like if you start with a organism that it's off of just touch. You know, some species on, on like, all, like all they got to do is touch something and, and wet, like, you know, whatever they use to touch it is what they consume it with. Yeah, you know, some... a dog will go up and grab something with his mouth. Mm, 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 mm. You know, you feel a horse, he's going into the, you know, to the trap with his mouth. Mm, mm, mm. True, you true. know, you throw something at a squirrel, he's going to pick it up. <laughs> mm. you know? so a monkey gonna grab the mango and eat half of it and throw it away the mm. gorilla you see a, see a gorilla smart enough to peel a banana mm. true 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 or 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 having that having that um that that programming i, I actually look at the different creatures as like the the animals man is an animal that's the next point about yes. man, because because of that, 
we started to fall into the European trap or the white man's trap about divorcing ourselves from the living species that are known as animals, the living creatures. You know what I'm saying? Because he was divorced from the living creatures because he was a evolution or maybe even a devolution. You know, we have to consider whether the white man was a devolution in a sense. You know what I'm saying? Or whether he considered himself. I think this is the big thing. Because I don't think we consider him that. Because it's not us that made these theories against him. It's we that are trying to, um, how can I say, balance the equation. You know, resolve the systemic anomaly. You know what I'm saying? That when well, you mentioned about the hands, I got this thing on the screen. Notice, you see one of the pictures that have what looks like hands. It's actually the foot. It looks like it looks look, almost yeah, like, yeah. It like cuneo. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting. It looks like cuneiform. It looks like cuneiform. If you ever see because cuneo, they use, because, they, because they use their feet to grab. Yeah. So their feet look like kind of, kind of hands because they can just because they can grab tree limbs with their feet. They can, they can, you know, they can grab certain things with their feet. Exactly. And we was talking about earlier the opposable thumb. How we have yeah, like you exactly. know the old joke is how many fingers do you have? And you say I have ten fingers. And they say, er, wrong. You oh, have yeah, eight. eight fingers and two That's thumbs. Yeah. Because a thumb, technically, if you think about it, technically, it's not like the other fingers. It's it's what they call opposable thumbs. Because our thumbs, think about how important the thumb is. Without the thumb, think about how many things we would not be able to do without having a thumb. And then we look at the other creatures. As the brother was saying, most other creatures, when they eat something, you know, like fish or other horses, they just use their mouth. They'll grab with their mouth. You know what I mean? But we look at, um, or even snakes, in a sense. You know what I'm saying? You know, or certain type of reptiles. You know, they will grab it with their mouth. You know what I mean? And they'll chew it there. Or even leave a lion or a tiger. He may use his paws, but, but, but even their paws are different than our hands. So in, in Darwin's Origin of Species, he made certain obvious, we could say observable connections. You know what I mean? And compiled these connections, you know, between like, for example, the chimpanzee, you know, or the gorilla, right? Or what he called the great ape. The, see, here's the thing I want the brothers and sisters to recognize right here, right? Just on this whole evolution theory. Now that we recognize, you know, the racial dynamics that were you know, superimpose on it is the whole ape versus monkey, right? The origin of species, Darwin's um, theory, and the more correct scientific uh, evolution, um, how can I say, information and knowledge out there, it points to that there being a great connection between man, the human being, and the ape. But the monkey and the ape are so similar for most of us who, who are not really around these creatures. If we was around these creatures, we would know the difference. But we only see them on TV or... You remember back in the days of the Tarzan movie, you know what I'm saying? Now think yeah. about how that just jacks up black people's thinking. So we look at the Tarzan movie and white people already calling our people monkeys and apes. You know what I'm saying? You know... Even though we notice certain things that they obviously didn't notice, that some of these things have white skin underneath. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so that, that it would really be black people. But they were calling us these names and other names, every name but a child of God name. That when they start talking about the great ape, we think monkey. So we have to, we ourselves, even my, me and myself, I had to do some research on this just to affirm what I already knew. But I had to recognize, well, why am I looking at it in this way? Why, when I think of monkey, you know, there's a certain, you know, um, vibe. And I detected it's because of what happened to our people. Like when you say when you went to school, you may have to break that one down to them. When you went to school and they started to teach back in, you know, back in the days. This is like back in what the, was this the 70s, the, not the 70s, the 80s? What was it, 70s, 80s, maybe the 80s? Um, 80s. Oh. Like, eight, like, eight, like, eight, like 81, wrong time, so 82, the early 80s, when yeah. they bring these these um, documentaries and put these documentaries, remember they had the, uh, 
the real to real type thing where they put it on that big circular thing for what they call them again you know like the, like the projector thing they used to have with the reels they take oh, out yeah, the yeah. and put them on the reel yeah the reel to reel you know, this wrong metal key so you take it out and set it up on the thing and put the tape through the thing and you bring down the, the screen and the put on a projector yeah them kind of thing <laughs> so they brought in this thing about evolution teaching us about evolution and they came in and in a documentary they were saying that black people came from apes and they were showing the evolution from the ape and all fours to standing up walking and then transforming into a man and transforming into a black man so there's a few of we in the class that we see this thing and we just bounce. We just walk out of the class and left because we said this is foolishness and we ain't staying in here for this. You know, so even at that age, you know, we don't reject that theory long time. Mm, mm. So, yeah. so that indoctrination didn't work on us. You know, I don't know who he worked on, but they didn't work on us. Even Bob Marley says something about that if we came from the monkey or the ape, um, how come the monkey, we still have the monkey or ape? You know, yeah. there, there were such easy, logical things. I, that's not a big scientific thing. That's more like philosophical, what even Bob said. But it does point to a fact, you know, that if if we directly came from the ape. Now, we're not, we can't dismiss a similarity. Even some would even go to genetics and even say that, we have the most closest genes according to what has been sequenced, you know, by various studies, you know, with the ape as human being. You well, know, that's the theory. That's the gist of Darwin's thing. It's a theory. People have to remember. It's Darwin's theory. When you see these things, like I explained earlier, going from how certain species eat to now you have so you see certain species eat with their hands, just like us the humans, who is part of that chain. Right? We start of that evolutionary train as far as things that is here on the earth. Mm. So, when he look at that now, in his theory, he would want to know if everybody starts from this point and then through time, it, things change to this. That's just a theory. They took that theory and make it into something that is. Hmm. Or they, or so when he said make it, Darwin's yeah. theory, he saw the difference in species and how they function in their environment through time or whatnot. And just had an idea, did all of this start from one species and change into all of it? That's just a theory. That's not something that is concrete to put on the ground. That's a theory and that's a logical theory to ask if anybody's an intelligent person and see this. In these studies, that is not a way of question to think about. Mm, mm, mm. Exactly. E even for ones who are, are biblical, right? And this is not dismissing creation. This is dismissing ideas concerning creation that over time we find that don't stand up to um, the test or the proof. You know what I mean? Like if, if they said water was wet, 10,000 years ago, right? And we can prove that it was said 10,000 years ago water was wet, right? And we say, oh, look, this is water and water is still wet, right? It basically justifies that what they said back then, they was talking about the same thing we're talking about now. But now as we look at some of these things such as evolution, we're looking at evolution and first of all, recognizing the word doesn't, doesn't even mean, you know what I mean? Yeah, what they make us believe it means. And for ones who are biblical, like, for example, um, I was thinking about going into this reasonment, like black people, um, evolution and the Bible. I was going to say the Bible and evolution, but we don't put evolution forward, you know, maybe another title or whatnot. But let's 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 reason to to the point, you know, about the whole theory of evolution, you know, and also why we as black people have often may have a different reaction for two to, for, for two reasons one is because of the indoctrination of christianity or was white anglo-saxon protestant christianity you know the white man's version of christianity you know what i mean because of that indoctrination of christianity and how 
and in that indoctrination, we was put under this Canaanite curse. You know, that we were, you know, cursed and, and Ham and the curse of Ham, you know, which was another lie like the evolution lie. But there's a truth, right, to evolution. But there's a lie also about evolution. You know what I'm saying? And the lie about evolution is that Darwin was talking about evolution. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What he was talking about, right, is amongst different species, right, there is a sense of species do evolve over time. You see what I'm saying? But the idea of evolution often points to this whole monkey man or ape to man business. You know what I mean? And if you notice, all the confusions that a lot of us have and a lot of people have with it is because, first of all, the monkey and the ape, right? Most of us don't know the difference between the monkey and the ape. It's important to understand the difference between the monkey and the ape and why, according to the more true theory. Now, it's a theory that we have to say, honestly, we look at the facts. Of all the animals, which animal is closest in a lot of checkpoints to man? The ape. the ape, you know, the ape, the chimpanzee, you know, the great, what they call it, yeah, what they call a great ape, you know what I mean? You know, and some even say that, well, we don't come from the great ape, we are the great ape. What do you say to that? <laughs> this is going back to, you know, and then I have to say, that in the Planet of the Apes, <laughs> my favorite character was that general. He got his, what, Ulysses or something? Oh, I forgot his name. You, you, you remember the Planet of the Apes, right? The original Planet of the Apes? Yeah. Yeah, my favorite character, you know, was him. Now, of course, we look at some of the, the, the apes and so forth and so on, and some of them might have, you know, dark, you know, dark complexion. And see, this is where the racists, because, see, racism will cause you to lose your mind. You have to always what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Because it, in a sense, even to so-called hate the white man because he's white or, or whatnot like that, and to say you represent the original black man, that's, a, that's also a part of us, even if we look at history, we look at genetics, so forth and so on. The real difference is, is in the psycho psychology and the spirit. And psychology and spirit is not an earthly thing. Think about what I'm saying here. Psychology and spirit, the real problems that we have as human beings, right, is really not the physical part. part. If you think about it. Yeah. The real problem is the soul and the mind. Like we say the heart and the mind. You know, and when and when these bad ideas, you know, like the, like how evolution theory originally was promoted. And then how right now there seems to be a sense of trying to um, reform this idea. And a lot of our own black people and black scholars, they do promote evolution in the sense of it's a process. There is a process of evolution. But why I say all of this, I'm not saying that man, that we evolved from the great ape. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I would say, if you can receive it, we are the great ape. <laughs> if, if you can receive it like that. You know what I mean? But what, what, what is proven is this, that it's evolution in species. This is what's factually proven. There's evolution in species. Like, for example, among types of birds, there's different kind of birds. You know what I mean? Among, like, dogs and wolves. You know, you see how there's a lot of similarity between dogs and wolves. You know what I mean? And it seems like they belong to like a similar family. You know what I mean? And there's a, this, this is what Darwin, like you said, what Darwin did by actually going out there on the ground. You know what I mean? And documenting these things, you know, and putting things together. You know what I mean? And theorizing certain things that he could not really definitively prove. But these are the type of things when we say, hmm, between a man and a ape there is a lot of similarity now this doesn't mean that we're saying that well he actually evolved from it so when we talk about was it creation or evolution 
Which one was it? Or 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 is both true? In 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 the true context, was it one or the other? Was it was it creation? I say it's both. I say it's both because I I also look at um, the survival of species throughout certain ages. You know, you had the ice age and all these different type of times, and mm. you know these species evolved in a way to so you know to survive certain climate change. Uh, you know, catastrophes that happen on Earth, that these things find a way to survive. You know, so they have to evolve in certain type of form in order to survive. Mm, mm, mm. True, true. You, know, you have a certain species of of um, things on this Earth that can change their sex whenever they feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is evolution, but but no, that species doesn't change to a totally different species. No, that's what I, that's what I mean. Evolution and species, you know, like even we as people today, for example, look at today with the new technology and and different ways of doing the the old the same old things, but different ways. Some of us are able to adapt. You know what I mean? What ones might even call evolve. You know what I'm saying? Can adapt, evolve to you know the new time, and then some cannot. You know what I mean? And it's like if you're not able to adapt, you basically die. Or your species die. One thing I learned about Ethiopia in the early days of studying different things, it was that of adaptation, like how Ethiopian culture, the ancient culture, including all the different tribes and nations but as one kind of people consciousness over the various times that it existed it was always able to kind of adapt in a sense of keeping certain of its own traditional cultural roots but adapting to other uh, other other changes or other things that were going on like for example how the Ethiopians they have monuments that was written like in, 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 in two or three languages. You know what I mean? Like 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 two of their own languages, like say Gutas. You know what I mean? Maybe even Sabian. And maybe even a little Greek. You know what I'm saying? And you yeah. say, wait, wait, how come they were using Greek? Were they under the Greeks? No, they were never conquered by the Greeks. But what they did, they did business. You know, as like a sovereign, you know, as a sovereign culture. How like a culture can adapt, you know, like for example, check this out. How many people around the world have 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 evolved hip hop and evolved even reggae music? You know what I mean? How reggae music that basically and 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 and, and even hip hop, you know, amongst the Beta Israel, right, among the Israelites and the lost sheep over here, we basically created or developed these musical genres like hip hop. Right, and reggae and soul and other music but notice how different other peoples have adapted that music our music you know what i'm saying yeah. and in a sense have evolved it or we can say depends on our critique have devolved it you know what i mean into another form so it's to recognize that even in creation see first of all you need creation first the, the first thing you need is creation. So creation, in a sense, is first. Once you have creation, then you have things that will evolve according to its kind, according to its species. Just like you have it in the Bible in Genesis. According to its kind, according to its species. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because we were talking about the Nephilim even before. What they were doing was messing up the, the pattern. They was messing up the species, you know, by yeah, their they hybrid. Were with, yeah, they were playing with DNA structures, splicing and dicing. Exactly. And that's why creation, according to even the scripture with the flood, that's basically like a, a reboot. It had to, you know what I mean? It had to be reboot. Like, like say, your, your computer ain't working or ain't functioning right. And so you have to crash. You have to shut it down. And you have to restart it. You may have to reinstall. You know what I mean? So <laughs> You know what I mean? Certain operational software, right? So we do have 
evolution in species. You know what I mean? So what is called the human. Now the next thing that they do, the European do, is he puts it in his um, terminology or in terminology that basically go back to Greco-Roman roots. What I submit to you is that ancient peoples also were studying this same process that we can call generally evolution, like the ancient Egyptians. Why do you think ancient peoples use this composite of animal heads with human bodies? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do you really think that there were these animal heads with human bodies? You know what I mean? Like there was actually somebody walking around with like a, a, a hawk's head. You know what I mean? Or, or, or somebody, you know, it's a possibility. But so far, we haven't found, you know, there hasn't been nothing that's been found, no bones or whatever. You know what I mean? But what they were showing is they were using the animal types to, to reflect on the human psychological and spiritual condition. That's why they use the animal head. You know what I'm saying? You know, because like different animals, like, um, for example, um, like even in the Bible, in the Bible, in the Hebrew Bible, the difference with Egypt, we might not picture it as a picture, but we will picture it in words. Like where Solomon, I think, says to his love interest in Song of Songs, he says, thou hast dove's eyes. Dove's eyes. You know, a dove? Yeah. What's so special about a dove? So I read it and I say, wow, this is beautiful poet poetry. Like Solomon got that relix, you know what I mean? He can chat. Well, that's like attributes too. Like, it's like attributes, you know. Um, but, um, remember we were talking about um, like before we started reasoning and uh, just vibes in here. Uh, I was speaking about um, you know in the kung fu movies. When you're watching these kung fu movies, you see the attributes of different animals. In different one of the fighters, this one to be a tiger, this one to be a crane, this one to be a crane. Man. Oh, there you go, there you go. Mm -hmm. You know, so these things are used as attributes as well too, as you know, your attribute is more like a tiger, you know, a lion, you're ferocious, you know. This next one might be like a snake, you know, you're more cunning, man. you know. True, true. And, and, and you hit it, you hit it because why I was going to bring out that dove's eyes, that, that when you study a dove's eyes, I went through some deep study of song. Song of Songs is almost like the holy place. It's like the holy of holies in the Bible, in a sense. If you can, if you can enter it, right and accurate, you know what I mean. All depends on your POV, your perspective. But when it says dove's eyes, that a dove, it sees through. A dove sees in a singular eye, like a one eye. You see how sometimes a dove will look at you at, with one eye. Yeah. Because it has a singleness of vision. So when Solomon used this verbal hieroglyph, you know, of his love interest having dove's eyes, he's saying that she has like a single point of vision, you know, like a single point, you know what I mean? Uh, it, 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 like you said, bringing out the attributes, but the different aspects. So throughout the scripture, notice this, because ones might be a little bit like, what do you mean the Bible? And then you're going to talk about evolution because they have been kind of like, um, negatively charged you know what i mean because of the pre-existing condition and prior history that's why we touched on that at the outset to point out the racial connotations that originally were put forward when they brought things like evolution and and monkey business and man evolving and how they try to make like well the white man is the most evolved right of all people and therefore, he's like the top of the totem pole. You know what I'm saying? On that level. So this is why it was rejected originally. And then when they say, well, Darwin is behind it. We rejected Darwin. But now as we get more scientific, knowledgeable, you know, get the data and study, you know, to find the truth for ourselves, we find, wait, wait, if the boy Darwin never even, you know what I mean? <laughs> Use and this a, word. And it's, a theory, and it's a theory based on study. That's all it is. It's a theory based on study, seeing things and and watching different things and just having a theory one day if this is possible. Oh, but let's not put down theory either. Why I say that is the, the first four letters of theory in the koina, the common, it's called the koina, you know, the Coptic Greek, right, of the first century time. 
right? The word theo, the word theo or theo, theo, theo in um, or theos in in the Greek way of saying it, but we say theo today, theo, right? It basically means God. Think about it for a moment. So even the word theory. If we look at it, and we're not even looking at the etymology. Some of you can go ahead and look at the etymology on etym online. But theory, we can just do like what the Rasta mind, the elders taught us, pick sense out of nonsense. You know what I'm saying? So you look at theory, if Theo means God, like Tewudros, Tewudros, the name Tewudros or Theodore basically means the beloved of God. Tewudros, like adore, like Tewudros, like, like adored of God or beloved of God. So if theory has Theo in it, is it a God ray? You know what I mean? Like, you know, like like one ray. You're almost like the Aten. You know when they show the Aten and it has all the different rays, all the different rays that come down in hands? It's like one perspective. You know what I mean? One, one perspective. So even as true as it is, it might not encompass the full range of the light. But it can still show an aspect you can see an aspect of light, you know, within that, an aspect of truth within that. So, so I'm just, I'm not doing a 180, right, on um, evolution because we always recognize that words are just words. Words get charged. You know how like those movies where they take a piece of metal and they make the metal magnetic. You know that from the kung fu yeah. movie. You've seen that yeah. before. Yeah. Right, so the same way, or you can also decharge something that's magnetic, you know, something that's magnetic. If you know what to do, you can make it unmagnetic, you know what I mean, or you can magnetize something, you know. So, something's had a charge, you know, concerning this whole evolution thing, you know. But even the ancient Egyptians knew about evolution. I mean, there's some deeper aspects, and I want to point out, um. Gerald Macy. I like I like I like the boy Gerald Macy's writings because his main thing was going against the European Christian con convention and Jewish ideas and basically showing that before all of that there was there was there was there was Egypt, the mouthpiece, but then there was a root Ethiopia. And he basically says that if there was any Jews, why right, these Jews he connected with Ethiopia. You know, and even if there's any truth to the Israel thing, it was connected to Ethiopia and Egypt. Because basically his point of view was basically he was arguing against his his fellow white people who are scholars and academics. You know what I mean? For being so highly learned, but almost leaving um, the root of e Egypt out of the equation, Ethiopia. You know what I mean? And he was pursuing a, like a different point of view but he talked about how the ancient Egyptians themselves in some of the earliest writings kind of point to that they too evolved too but that their evolution was so long ago that they have even forgotten about it you know what I'm saying yes. you know what I mean like something you used to, used to be in a, used to live a different kind of life so long ago that that you don't even you forgot about it you remember it if you're forced to remember it, but even yeah. when you remember it, it's like a different life. It's like a whole different, you know what I mean? So even the ancient Egyptians, we could say evolved. They, I mean, they evolved from the pre-dynastic time, from a time when they were just wild tribes fighting each other to being more unified and working together, and then eventually, you know, becoming a nation. Until they were colonized by Ethiopia, let's say. Well, I think, well, I, well, well, I think getting into that colonization aspect, um, I think that they became a colony because of when the first ones were sent forward. This is kind of also a connected point because we're talking about the evolution of yes. humanity. And the evolution of humanity right, is a very real thing. For example, we don't ride around with horse and buggy today, but we have no. cars and we call the speed horsepower, right? They still use horsepower, right? They still use in a technological, scientific, computer age, we still are talking about how fast a car goes. We can do that horsepower, yeah. as horsepower, even though gradually that's being maybe phased out or they're trying to phase it out. But it's so hardwired 
into us as a species you know as a species and it also goes across linguistics too there's some things that go across languages so people may be speaking other languages but they basically are speaking essentially about the same you know about the same thing you know what i mean so the ancient egyptians yeah they evolved they evolved as well you know and they talk about that kind of evolution and part of why they looked at the nubians differently in some periods of time is because they saw them as not being as evolved they were almost like y'all are our ancestors but we're a little embarrassed about you you know what i'm saying because look at what we got to but the colonization began from when the first ones either were sent forward from ethiopia or from the from the mountain of the moon the horn of africa the source of the the waters region right we could say proverbably like a kind of a garden right region or source of the waters region when they either went down the now or they were sent down the now now we don't have the direct information as to whether they were sent some people say they could have been sent as 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 exiles you know one sent out almost like the adam being sent out the garden so to speak you know or right they you know um were explorers or they just follow the natural course of the nile and say well where does this go to you know what i'm saying but because they came from the mountain of the moons where ethiopia kenya uganda tanzania you know those countries zimbabwe are right there that they they originated from there so here's where the ethiopia connection but moreover when the egyptians got literate and they started to, um, you know, they started to, uh, you could say, record their own story. They spoke about Ethiopia as being, what they, and one of the Egyptian words, I think, is the Kui land. The Kui land, right? The Kui land or the Kui, Kui land, like K-H-U-I or K-H-U-Y, right? The Kui land. And that was to say like the land of the gods or the spiritual land. The land of you know the you know the land the spiritual land the land of the gods but they pointed to that as being their original or origination but see the evolution was a process of purification you get what i'm saying yeah. because in a sense they came from what they regarded to be a low degree which was the highlands down to now and then eventually they built up this civilization right that basically eclipsed you know what i mean where they came from you see what i'm saying where they came from because this is the anomaly people say well the the nubians are the original egyptians the original egyptian or nubians others like us will say the nubians and the kushites were the original ancient you know egyptians so to speak mitzrayim you know um and this is true but then later on in egyptian history it seems as though they looked why well, i say they looked down on the nubians the Tarnesi, they didn't look down on them because they didn't think they were human beings. They thought that they had not evolved. We came from you. You know, like you go back home, like you leave your home, you go abroad and you big up and everything. And then you go back to your place that you grew up and it's still like, you might think it's backward. You know what I mean? This happened across cultures. This happened across all cultures. Like when people leave their hometown and then they go to the big city, then they come back to the hometown. It's like it's like in the African movie. You go back to the village, right? To you, the village seemed like backward because you just came from the cities. So there was that sort of an idea because the ancient Egyptians had evolved. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it basically was uh, when Ethiopia... It, it was strategic. If you look at where Egypt actually sits, at, in those days you would look and see how easy it was for them to, to uh, conduct commerce with the rest of the um, the Mediterranean co um, countries and trade ports throughout the you know the Nile Valley and. Um, but that was a. Uh... Um, but bro, but that was a later time. Well, you talking about? I, I what you're saying, but we're talking about like the first time. What they call the first time, like you know that book talk about the last what two million years. Yeah. And you said something important that writing. Give the people that about writing. 
about how writing about five thousand. They said before five thousand years ago, there was not um, written records readily kept as far as how we see things now, where people write things down in order for you know future generations to benefit from the writings. That particularly started. 5,000 years ago, so before 5,000 years ago, there was not really writings that people put down for future generations. So there's a lot of um, information and knowledge that we do not have because it was not written down. Mm, mm, that's a and, flag. Mm -hmm. and we don't know already, don't care how good a story is told to, you know, to ones and ones. Eventually that story gets caught up in someone else interpretation and gets changed to something that is not so when we're doing these things we have to remember that um there might be more knowledge out there that we don't have access to than we actually do mm. and it was more than one story like i think originally from what i've read of some ancient thank you bro because at five when he mentioned that when that i mentioned that to i about um 5,000 years, it also matched things that we know from pretty reliable written, you know, records, you know, Book of Adam and Eve, Ethiopic book, you know, speaks about that period of time. But there's a theory that, like, all stories came from ancient Egypt. No, that's not true. At, 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 at an early period of time, ancient, remember, ancient Egypt, even the Bible says, even before Egypt was a nation. It's interesting. It even speaks about before Egypt was a nation. Egypt was a nation long before Israel, right, or the Hebrews, you know, so-called were even thinking of a nation and becoming, you know, a nation of the priesthood and uh, and to be a holy, you know, like a, a, a holy nation. You know what I'm saying? Long before that, Egypt was a nation. But long before Egypt was a nation, it was a group of just peoples wasn't they um the samaritans before the egyptian well what well, well, what we're looking at there is based on the using the scripture as a written as you mentioned writing a written point right of information that every people's stories the early stories i like the different stories in the different places sumer and different places when we start to look at it not that okay this is the bible or this one took from that one just recognize that in the logical sense if we are brethren and we are a community we're going to be talking our story we're not going to be around other people because remember the 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 earth is not mapped out as it would be in the coming hundreds and and and, and thousands of years you know what i'm saying yes the earth is not mapped out you know what I mean? Different peoples being scattered to different corners. So we have twofold. We have before what is called like Noah and after Noah. So we have to look at the before Noah, right? The before Noah aspect from the Bible, it points to um, Ethiopia, right? It points to the Nile or then the Gihon River. But then it also points in that first chapter, it points to the Tigris Euphrates, Right? And if that's the same Tigris Euphrates, that's another river valley. Like, so we had two like river valley civilizations. You know what I mean? But if we have river valley civilizations, that's like a civilization in the valley. But we also had people coming down from the highlands. We know this from Ethiopia. You know, we have Ethiopia and, uh, and the Horn of Africa, you know what I mean? With the mountains of the moon, the water. So people were living there. And according to even ancient Egypt, they migrated down the Nile. So there's like two, there's the before the flood and there's the after the flood. Why I mention it like that is because sometimes we confound or people, it's easy to get, get confounded. What, what are we speaking about before this kind of disper before the reboot? There seems to be a time of a reboot. And when people- so there's evolution in that too, no? There's an evolution we could see in that too if we quit, um scriptural history to history here as far as to what's in this book here we got the last two million years you know there's this thing called the pangea and 
if you understand what the Pangea is, is basically the, the continents as one. Now, it would be said if you put these two together, it would say during the flood there was an evolution of the earth as one that now we have all these continents. It is no longer Pangea, now we have all these continents. So you could look at that as an evolution as well as when you're talking about there's things moving because if the earth was one and now it's not, when did that take place? And the only time it could take place logically why we're speaking right here is during the flood. Mm, mm, mm. And 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 now ones would dispute, some would dispute that um in the sense of the biblical narrative seems to point to a more concise in some time period of time and others would say well it would take like thousands of years for the happen but i dispute that if the earth for example i'm trying to get some pangea pictures here because we're just moving into this subject matter here i got a picture of pangea right here where it shows like you know, on a kind of a flat earth, but everything on a one side of a circle type of a globe, but all the continents, South Africa, I mean, South America, fitting right into the West Coast of Africa, you know, and East Antarctica fitting into, you know, and India, yeah. And so like with all the continents being as one, theoretically speaking, right? Theoretically speaking, we can see that in some areas, of the earth based on just what the archaeologists have you know brought forward and what appears to be the truth of the matter some areas of the earth are older areas of existence you know what i mean where it seems like people have been living there like more on than off for thousands of years you see what i'm saying other areas seem to be have some thousands of years but not as many thousands of years you know what i'm saying like some places seem to be from this point of view lived in to lived in like at least eight thousand years other places are like maybe more like seven thousand years other places go back like five thousand years you know what i mean of recorded history other places we look at different calendars you know we can see that being true some calendars go back to 5,000 years. Some calendars maybe only go back to 3,000 years. Look at the Muslim calendar. I think it goes, you know, it's, 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 it's since what, 600 something. So it should be up to roughly maybe 1,000 years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, well, like what you said, the recorded history. We have to find a recorded history. Not because you go back and find recorded history mean that's where things start. Remember, we just said a while ago, they didn't start keeping written records until about 5,000 years ago. So we don't have no clue of what certain things are before and how long before. But in some places of the earth, we see, we see, um, or at least they have shown us um, archaeology, which shows that there were things built. Yes. And these things, where they appear, they seem to be older than other civilizations that were there which are thousands of years. So like a civilization, like say, th that was a thousands of years. You know what I'm saying? Right? And then they find under that civilization or nearby and uh, much older than that is a whole other civilization that must have been logically before that civilization. Well, you just explained it, Sahara. There's not just no, you know. Remember... If you go, if like, like, um, um, like if you go back in certain writings and certain um, like historical um, writings, the Sahara Desert was once a lush green area. So yeah, so one has to ask himself, how well, yeah, how long approximately ago was that? Was that you know what I mean? How long ago approximately? Because it even shows that. Even if we take like Moses and the Mosaic writings in like Genesis, where he and uh, where they attempt to give like a summary, it seems to be pointing to something that's that is far ancient. You know what I'm saying? Something that is far older, but they are not able to like like the records that Moses is looking at is ancient, even in what he is articulating there, but the details 
are beyond us. You know, like these places he mentions where it talk about the garden and there was a there was these waters, you know what I'm saying? And how these waters, like when it's all about encircling Ethiopia. If we look at today, some of these river connections are not visible today. You see what I'm saying? That means they must have dried up. You know what I mean? They must have dried up long time ago. You know what I mean? So how long is this? So even in the Mosaic account, right, although it makes mention of Adam, makes mention of Eve, makes mention of ones and ones there, before it even goes into that detail, notice in the Bible, I think it's in Genesis chapter, what is it, um, um, 2, it starts to point out these rivers going to these key areas of two ancient civilizations that there's a big debate. There's a big debate now to which one is older. Right? Was it Egypt, the Nile Valley civilization, or was it Sumer, as the brother acts? Was it Sumer? You know what I mean? And some of us being pro, you know, maybe African and pro, pro black and, you know, the Kemetic influence would probably say it was Kemet, just out of a knee jerk reaction. You know what I'm saying? But what if I told you that the original civilization in the Ethiopia region? connected with Ethiopia, Pangaea, let me put it like this. In the, before the flood, the Ethiopia, Pangaea region. After the flood, you know what I mean? Beginning over in Sumer and traveling from the east to the west. In other words, traveling from the east, from the far part of Afro-Asia, right, into more Africa proper. And you want to tell what book said? Come with it. <laughs> In this book, it says the dawn of civilization in the land of two rivers. And it says from, it has here, 3500 BC, 539 BC. Then it says in Mesopotamia, 5,000 years ago, men combined their skills to set up an organized state where writing was invented and the world's first cities were built. Mm, mm, mm. And, 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 and there, what you're talking about there, in a type of, uh, I see this is also my evolution here. This is evolution here. It's, they, they talk about two rivers. And the two rivers they're talking about here, it starts off saying between the rivers, Tigris and Euphrates, lies a broad, fertile valley that has a better claim than anywhere else on earth to be regarded as the birthplace of civilization. Which is between In the southern part of this long valley, an energetic and in, in innovative people known as the Sumerians began to build the world's first cities more than 5,000 years ago. That, that's facts right there. That's facts. And and see, here's where we get into like a kind of a pro-black out of a kind of a knee-jerk reaction. And we focus on Kemet or we focus on like East Africa, right? And we have to recognize that black people were even in the, the same place that the brothers pointing out. I'm trying to get a, I'm trying to get a pick right here so one can see this particular region right here. Um, Let me read the other paragraph. It says they invented a system of writing and discovered bronze, and they are the first people known to have used wheeled vehicles with the new form strength of large-scale organization and the, um, the precious waters of the two rivers to fight over the Sumerians also waged the world's first war as distinct from tribal uh, skirmishes. It goes on to say they are... Um, the area settled by the Sumerians was known to the Greeks as Mesopotamia. The land 
between the two rivers. This name came later to apply to the entire length of the valley, which was later centuries the home also of the Arcadians, the Babylonians, and the Assyrians. Though these people came as conquerors, they absorbed much of the civilization of their predecessors and added to their own architecture, their own sculptures, and their own skills in astronomy, mathematics, medicine. The Mesopotamian people survived for more than 3,000 years until conquered, excuse me, until the conquest of Babylon by the Persians in 539 BC made Mesopotamia part of an even wider empire. Even today, Marsh Arab of the Euphrates Delta live in reed houses, little, little altered in style since ancient times. The Tigris and the Euphrates push, um, pressure um, the median course from northwest to southeast across modern Iraq toward the Persian Gulf. The country on either side of the border valley is today a vast desert. But before the glaciers retreated at the end of the last ice age, some 10,000 years ago, the valley was bordered by grassland supporting grazing animals and the nomadic hunters who followed the herds. As the ice caps retreated, the climate gradually became dire and the grassland became desert. Mm. But the two rivers flooding annually brought down mud, which they deposited along their banks, building a fertile green strip across the desert. Men moved with their animals towards the two rivers, which with a few desert oasis were the only remaining source of water. Next, the nomads learned to sow uh, cereals, C-E-R-E-A-L-S, cereals, mm. wheat, I don't know if they meant, I meant to mean cereal or what, but yeah, cereal. cereal, wheat, barley, uh, developed from wild grasses in the mud beside the river. So, they, so all this come down from the river. What are we talking about the banks there? But this shows the civilization of the Sumerians from way, from way, way back. From the, like basically the branch age, Mesopotamians, they call them. Civilization spread gradually northward along the borders, fertile valley in the Tigris and Euphrates rivers. Hold, hold, hold for a moment, hold for a moment, you there? Yeah. Hold for a moment, hold for a moment, what's going on with this phone? Yeah, the sound just went, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had the sound on the boost right there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, come through with that because while, while, while I was doing that, the people can see that we were trying to find the appropriate, um, you know, appropriate kind of a meme because this is some areas of, of real research that we haven't gotten into, but it's like the missing... It's kind of the missing link, you know, of areas of research that we really do need to, you know, get into. You know what I mean? They were very spiritual people too. They were very spiritual people because it says here that they had a thing called homage to the gods, you know? 
uh, you know, whatever God is speaking, but there was, you know, people who, you know, I believe in some type of spirituality. They said the Sumerians of the early Mesopotamia believed that their principal function in life was to serve the gods. Well, well there's a lot of um, research which is basically in spite of how some monuments are, are are made to appear or what people may, you know, like how they will try to say certain things in ancient Egypt are white people or whatever else like that. But um, the same thing they try to do over there, there's a movement of um, black scholars and other students who are interested, who are seeing the African, um, well, we can say the black man, African, quote, Ethiopian, more correctly, connection. And what I like to share right here to what the I just read about Mesopotamia, right? Yeah, Mesopotamia. Um, <laughs> in fact, in fact, as we go through the Torah, Mesopotamia, by another name, they might refer to as Aram, Aram Naharaim. Aram means like 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 like, like the Arameans. Aram it means like a highland because there's some mountains, like seven mountains up there, is a particular holy place, and and Naharaim, Nahar, Nahar in Hebrew is river, like singular. Naharaim, Naharaim is like rivers. Naharaim is rivers. So it's like the Aram of the two rivers. But later on, they would refer to that as like Mesopotamia. I think that's like the, I think I think that's like the Greek, you know, for some Greek, you know, so forth and so on. But what the brother just mentioned right here, and give thanks for that read right there. I know there's more, and make me want to get this uh, book, you know, soon, soon. I sent you something, because the same thing I have on the screen, because I wanted to go into this because you went into that right there. I wanted to bring this forward right here. This is kind of a related point to like maybe the evolution, as it were, of ancient black civilization. I think this is how we got to put this right here so that the peoples at least can get, you know, the first sense. This is the first sense of why this study is important because there's been a lot of study on the Nile Valley civilization. And the Nile Valley, or more correctly, the Highland Ethiopia civilization going all the way to South Africa, this is when we get to the very beginning, you could say, of the, of the creation, biblical, historical, even DNA backs a lot of that, this up. You know what I'm saying? Story. You know, like the whole out of Africa theory, right? Because things really began from the South. Right, but between Ethiopia, Ethiopia is very important because here in Genesis, just go to Genesis, Genesis for a moment. When you go to Genesis chapter two, verse ten, I point to this on the screen. You see the, you see the same thing where it says Ham and Cush. Now Ham and Cush, we're talking here of after Noah, right? So there is a whole creation early creation I mean when I say early creation like millions of years or whatever for the creation of the earth you know what I mean because things do have their processes and man comes into the equation even in the biblical narrative rather lately right now we can speculate that they were pre-Adamites you know if we would go into the, the apes you know the whole ape the great ape theory you know what I'm saying we could speculate that there were other other beings that were like people but actually were great apes right but what's interesting is that man in the present form that we know of man the black man and all other evolved from you know species of humanity from black man woman and child we can see that that is a fairly late testified witnessed you know what i'm saying because so all the evidence that we witness of like it's like when man started to write and record is this evol this evolved species of us as man right you yes. know what i'm saying that's linked to us today even though like it's kind of a mixed thing that we're in we're in evolution some are talking about revolution right and some are fighting against or falling to devolution Right, but here in Genesis chapter ten, I mean chapter two, verse ten, you, you got it right there. Yeah. Actually, 
um just keep in mind what verse 8 says where it says and yahuwah elohim or exiavia amlak planted a garden eastward in eden and there he put the man whom he had formed now as we mentioned formation is not creation uh, you know when we study like uh, we the black jews you know in rastafari yehudi we study like the kabbalah on a certain level there is like different you know the different forms of what is creation right and creation right is creation but then formation once something is created you can form it or reform it you know what i'm saying yeah but 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 you can't reform something that is not the, in existence right so when it says that man whom he had formed it appears in the scripture that a different process was done on this man right here and this man stands for man so when people talk about adam adam is not just a personal adam adam is a species adam you see what i'm saying from a hebrew perspective all people are adam you know what i'm saying in the sense that all people are of that same species of adam you know what i mean but then there are some who are evolved spiritually you know what i mean some who evolved psychologically according to you know this reality and the real the reality of the reality you know that's what we talk about spiritually evolving or spiritually leveling up you know what i mean but some are going down the ladder you know ain you know angels what's it angels ascending and descending you see what i'm saying because there's there's that choice factor you know what i mean the choice factor you know what some call free will i prefer just to call it will right sometimes it's free sometimes you have to pay for it but anyway um verse 10 says and a river went out of eden so the point here in the bible is that there was um a garden that was planted by yahweh elohim eastward now eastward now you do you see the picture that i have the ham kush are you looking at that yeah now eastward in eden if you can see the part that's africa right over there right or what they call africa proper right um the part that's called africa right there right now remember that arabia where it says havila arabia is connected to africa it's the same it's the same plate you know what i mean it, it, it's, yeah. it's connected right the yeah so so in the ancient times they understood that these two were connected today we have like maps of africa where we cut it out for political reasons you know like we have maps like i'm just showing the people on the screen right here where you had like maps of africa where you only see africa notice that they will cut out arabia but they'll keep the little piece of the sinai peninsula right yeah. and that's that's political right even in the oau map it's the same way you know what i mean but as we move forward we have to really look at africa and arabia together the term middle east was created in world war ii just want to point out to people it was created by middle east i mean correspondents who were reporting and they were reporting that this conflict was in the middle east so africa egypt is west let's get an orientation egypt is west and where you see all the lines converging where it says nimrod invades ashur and founds rehoboth right ur it says kala and resin and nineveh you see the part that is the um like kind of kind of a light yellow I'm, I'm zooming in for the people right here now i point this out right because we're going to zoom in on two quick things to what the brother said to put what he said from the from the what the reader's digest the last 2000 years into con two million, two million. Uh, two million. <laughs> sorry sorry you hear me 2000 years well, two million. Two my million. bad my bad <laughs> my bad give thanks give thanks correction yes sir um so when it says eastward and eden now many would maintain that where you see the triangle right there probably a little bit lower down where the green is that's where the persian gulf is what they call the persian gulf right that that right there would be the region of um some say the garden some speculate that the garden of eden now people say well well you mean it wasn't in africa 
See, these are latter-day terms that we're using. If we're going to try to decipher the Bible, we're going to have to interpret what the biblical context is, right, based on the latter-day information. But So we can't confuse the two terms. And so the Eden included what we call Africa and Arabia. The Eden included Africa and Arabia, where these two rivers are. How do we know this? Because when it says, and a river went out of Eden, to water the garden. Notice there was a garden eastward in Eden and there went a river out of Eden. Out of Eden. Now when I say out of Eden, here we're looking at where it says Cush and Dedan. Cush and Dedan down there. Right? Or where we say Ethiopia. You know, Cush and Dedan. Now what you see here as far as the tribes right, or the names, this is Genesis chapter 10. Now notice we're looking at two different things. We're looking at here in the scripts before the flood, before there was some sort of a disturbance that happened. Was this what they call Atlantis, the sinking of Atlantis? Could this be something like that? You know what I mean? You know, whatever Atlantis was, could this be linked with that? But here it says there was a river that went out of Eden to water the garden. Remember, the garden is in the east of Eden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads right so this is where i have some other uh, maps you can look up some of the ancient rivers like in like you know um the so-called middle east africa middle east some of the ancient rivers right and then it goes down the rivers it says the name of the first is pison and that it is which compasses the whole land of havila where there is gold now, many say that Havila, some say that Havila was likely like Sudan, right? You'll notice on the map right here, you see where it says um, Geludi came out of Havila and ended up in North Africa. And he says, see accompanying map. Then it says in Arabia, it says Havila. You see where it says Havila there. So many ones are not really sure where Havila was. You see what I'm saying? So there's different schools of thought on where Havila was. Some say Havila was in East Africa around Sudan, Ethiopia region. Others say it was Arabia. Some say, you know, it, it might have been the Horn of Africa more, but they're not really sure. But here's what the scripture says. Wherever it was, there was gold. So some point to Havila as possibly being Nubia, right? Because of the gold there, you know what I mean? From ancient testimonies, right? I don't know how much gold has been found in Arabia, you know what I'm saying? I'm, 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 and maybe there's a lot of gold there. I know there's oil. What we know in Arabia is oil. We don't know for gold. What we know in Africa, at least the place for gold, that the ancient Egyptians testified to, is Nubia. You know? And we also know that there's gold in India, too. I just want to point that out, too. You know what I mean? There's gold in India. So we're not too sure where this Havila was. Right, but it's likely if we connect the Eden with, with with Africa, you know what I mean? And when Arabia is desert now, but it wasn't always desert. You see what I'm saying? But we don't see the rivers, so that's why we see the desert. And the gold of that land is good, and there is bdellium and the onyx stone. So there's not only gold, but there is bdellium and there's onyx stone. So we know that Africa got a lot of resources, right? Right? They say a lot of natural resources. We know what the European and the colonizers, the crackers done, you know what I mean, done did. You know what I mean? You know, and still are doing, even to this very day. You know what I'm saying? So so we can say Africa is a likely candidate, right, for the Eden. And Eden was not just the garden. The garden was in the east or eastward in Eden. And this means there's two possible locations. We could say it was in East Africa, like where Ethiopia was. Or we can say that it was in Mesopotamia or the Aram Naharaim. And although I would like to say it was in East Africa because, you know, maybe being somewhat zealous on that level. But, you know, I mean, seeking to be, you know, um, in truth, I have to put that aside. I got to get out of that. So that's, that's subjective. I got to look at what the what the evidence scripturally and 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 according to you know we say the so-called real world facts and some of the best you know research like we have here and say that 
it doesn't appear that the garden, right, was in 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 what we would call Africa, right? But Africa is what is referred to as the Eden. You know what I mean? And Africa, including Arabia, when Arabia was green, right? Because remember, we're talking here in Genesis chapter 2 is before the flood. And there's something I think with time that gets a little bit confounded too. You know what I'm saying? I've been looking at this in the scripts. As I'm looking at the scripts and everything, we know that there's that 5,500 year prophecy. And notice how writing also begins according to the research you have there at about 5,000 years. You know what I mean? Recorded, recorded history. Yeah, yeah, recorded history, yeah. And what Moses is sharing right here, 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 right? Remember, he's saying that the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, when we read this here, we might think of it like a, as a movie. You know what I mean? Like in one scene, he created it, and the next scene, the next minute, he put Adam there. I think that there's some time you know what I'm saying? There's some time differential. It's like he created it, yeah. You know, and he 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 planted the garden, yeah. But it wasn't like the next day he put the man in there. You know what I mean? Because remember, it begins off saying that there was no man, right? You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, there was no man to to till the ground. You see what I'm saying? Because this is before even the Adam. Right, according to the scripture, gets kicked out of the garden. You know what I mean? And notice, he was kicked out of the garden and he went into like a desert like situation. So it changed, his scenery changed from someplace lush and green. You know what I'm saying? To someplace that was desert. You know, that was more harsh. You know, and according to the book of Adam and Eve, he had to dwell in caves. So wherever this was, we have to also look for these signs too. Where's a desert? Where's likely to have been a desert for a moment? Or was it like the Bible seems to infer that that what was lush and green began to turn? You know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. began to turn like a drought, uh, like immediate drought comes in. And we know that with weather patterns that these things can happen anywhere. Places that are green and lush now can have drought and look like a desert, right, tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? You know, these things have happened almost overnight. We see overnight changes, floods, tsunamis, you know what I mean? You know, other different things that can happen. So nature is very unpredictable. And nature can make changes that might seem like a thousand years happen overnight. You know, what I'm saying? you know what I'm saying so when yeah. some of the people theorize that well if there was a Pangaea and then there was like 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 the the continents moved apart my theory on this is that during some type of a flood like situation where there's where there is water or ice caps melting and there's more waters causing a flood on the earth that these things could happen in less than thousands of years that's what i'm trying to say and that while this flooding situation and this new water coming into the equation right this caused a pangea to start to break apart so when i look at genesis before the flood based on what i'm reading and studying what appears to be correct that was more of a pangea like situation you see what i'm saying that means that even the red sea could have been like a type of a river you see what I'm saying? Or a waterway. You know what I mean? As another river that's being mentioned here. Right? Because remember, there's two rivers over there, right? But there's four rivers. You know what I'm saying? There are four rivers when we talk about in total. There are four rivers. Because it says right here in Genesis chapter, chapter 2, verse 13, the name of the second river is Gihon. The same it is that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. Now, in the King James Version of the Bible, it says Ethiopia. In the Hebrew, it would more say Cush. Right? Now, why is Cush important? Because Cush, according to what the author is saying here in Genesis, Cush properly doesn't come into the equation until later on. 
unless there was already a Kush before Kush. <laughs> you follow what I'm saying? Yes. Unless there was a so so it's like this: either there was a Kush before Kush, or the author here is looking reflexively. He's looking like in a passive sense from what. Moses was learned in the wisdom of the Egypts. He was mighty in word and deed. So he's taking earlier history and trying to give a context of how things are coming down to the present narrative that he's narrating to the Israelites and the Hebrews. Right? So this one says that it compasseth. Compasseth means, sabab means it turns, it goes around. It goes around. You know what I mean? This whole land. Now, we don't see the river doing this quite like that. But we do see a river that seems to go around a portion of the land. Perhaps it's talking about this. But notice it goes on right here. And the name of the third river is Hidekel, that which it is which goeth toward the east of Assyria. Now Assyria is already over there in the east. You know what I'm saying? Assyria is, is in the same region of the Mesopotamia. It's over there in the east, but it's saying this river goes to the east of Assyria. So you get what I'm saying? Assyria's in the east. Like you're, you're standing on the, on the left, but there's somebody standing to your left. So that means the person standing to your left is more left than you are, but you already are standing to the left. So Assyria is over to the east, and the river went to the east of Assyria, and Assyria's in the east. So what the what the what the scriptures here is narrating from the Ethiopia side, right? And it's going over. Notice it's going over Arabia to the Mesopotamia side, and it's continuing. This is the picture that's being painted. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Notice something. The fourth river it doesn't give a description. Gihon it connected with Ethiopia. You know what I mean? The Pison it connected with the land of Havila. Right, Hidekel, it connects it with, with going to the east of Assyria. But then it just says here, and the fourth river is Euphrates. So the two rivers over there that you was reading about, that's the, like the Hidekel and the Euphrates, is the rivers over there. In that civilization, it goes back like 5,000 some years. Uh, the Tigris. Can you say the Tigris? The Tigris and the Euphrates. Yeah, yeah, the Tigris and Euphrates, but but that's the that's the link there with the Hidekel and the Euphrates. You know, just a, a kind of a difference of of some naming. You know? Now here I want to pause on this section right here because then it's going back into the narrative of the Lord God of Yahweh Elohim and the man being put into the garden of Eden. You know what I mean? So that was a garden, like say a garden of Africa. So Africa is Africa, but now you have a garden, right, within Africa, within the territory of Africa. So the garden was in the territory, right, of Eden, right? So this is where we get the bigger Africa, the greater Africa links, you know, to the, the so-called Middle East. But now just go here, my brother. Scroll now. Now this is what we reason on here is before, is before the flood, before Noah. Because what I'm trying to say right here is that when we're looking at ancient history, we have like a 5,000 year history that seems to kind of like, even though the Bible tends to say it begins at 5,500 years with Adam, it seems to almost re-begin, almost like creation begins again with Noah, if you look at it. Even from the biblical perspective, right? Because in the beginning we had water, right? You know, we had water and then the water, you know, recedes and then land comes about and things start to grow and come about and living things and then man comes along. So here we have also Noah. Now, after, after the flood in Genesis chapter 10, let's go to Nimrod because I want to bring on the screen um, what I just shared with, with the brother and shared with the either on Nimrod. So here we're getting a kind of evolution of civilization right but also in this evolution we're going to see some revolutions right get it so well, if you got evolution that's the groundation 
Like you can't have understanding until you have standing. You know, like you go in court and they tell you you don't have standing. You know, you got to sit down. <laughs> in Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, it says, and Cush. Now notice, they could have said, and Ethiopia. You see what I'm saying? But here they say, and Cush. In the Hebrew, it's the same as the Ethiopia quote, right? In Genesis, what, 2.13. But here, we're now speaking of Cush again. And Cush begat Nimrod. And he began to be a mighty hunter, a mighty one, right? A mighty one in the earth, right? And then in Genesis 10 and 9, he was a mighty hunter before Yahweh. Therefore, it is said, even as Nimrod, the mighty hunter before Jehovah, right? Now, why do I point this out right here? Are you looking at the, are you looking at the map? Yeah. Okay, now looking at this map here, when you zoom in, zooming in, right, on where all the arrows point to in the yellow area, to the triangle. It says, Nimrod invades Ashur and founds Rehoboth, Ir, Kala, and Rezin, and Nineveh. You know Nineveh where we have the Jonah narrative? And then if you scroll on the side, it says Nimrod's, Nimrod remains in Babylon, right, and takes over Erek, Kalna. And um, well, well, they said Al Qad as the first centers of his kingdom. Now let's see what the Bible says in Genesis chapter ten, right? Let's go to verse six. It says, "And the sons of Ham or Cam, Cush, Mitzrayim, Put or Fut, and Canaan. And the sons of Cush, Seba, Havila. Now notice Cush, Havila, right? Sab." Sabta, Rama, Sabteka, and the sons of Rama, Sheba, and Dan. Right? Now, you know what's very interesting? Is that these are also places that are named both in Africa and Arabia. You know what I mean? And this is coming from the lineage that, that traditional Christianity we would say is the black people, Ham. Right? But here's the thing that, that one I have to understand. This begins over here. It doesn't begin in the Nile Valley. They migrate to the Nile Valley. They migrate to the mountain of the moons again, according to the scripture, after this deluge, after this flood story. Civilization restarts originally before the flood, we have civilization starting in the Ethiopia region. But after this global water thing called flood deluge, some situation happened that restarted civilization or rebooted it after the flood. And here in the Bible, it points out to the ones that are called the black people or the Hamites and the, and the Kamites as having their beginning of civilization, right, after the flood with Nimrod, a son of Cush. And we know Cush is Ethiopia. So here's where we have two Ethiopias, bro. Possibly three, but two Ethiopias. Because what the Bible is stating right here is that after the, the flood, the ancestors wasn't back in the Nile Valley or on the continent that we call Africa, but they was in that particular region of the world. So this is what we as pro-blacks and black scholars have to recognize, that not only are we reclaiming our civilization, ancient civilization and knowledge of this on the continent and for ourselves abroad, but also by right, in other regions of Africa that has been renamed to make believe that it wasn't connected to Africa and where our ancestors or black people did not have an influence. This is one of the hidden areas of history. You know what I mean? That is also evolving, you know, as well. You know what I mean? Because it goes on to say, and Cush begat Nimrod, a mighty one in the earth. Right? Go to verse 10. Right? 10 10. It says, In the beginning of his kingdom was Babel and Erech, Akkad, and Kalna in the land of Shinar. Now, when you was talking about the, like the, the valley, the flat plain between the rivers, that's yeah. what this is talking about here in the Bible, the land of Shinar. And it says, out of that land went forth Ashur, 
So Ashur went out of that land, the land that Nimrod began his kingdom. So we have the Cushites through Nimrod, right, beginning a kingdom over there, right? <laughs> so now, for you to begin a kingdom, there has to be a lot of, you know, you got to have people, you know what I mean? There has to be a situation. There can't be like, if there's like, if there's like 50 of us, we might not begin a kingdom, you know what I'm saying, right now. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah, 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 too soon. We're just 50, you know? You know, like, are we 100? There would have to be to build a kingdom. And he's not building just one kingdom in one place. He's building a kingdom over in the different centers of this kingdom. Now, here's the question. Was this before or after the Tower of Babel? Why do I ask that question? Because some see that Nimrod built the Tower of Babel and, and the Lord was going against Nimrod. I think that's a false view right there. I think that's a false view right there. That Nimrod and this building, right, actually occurs, you know, after there was this scattering. And when it says that the whole earth was of one in, in the plain of Shinar, they found a plain in the land of Shinar. Notice it didn't say that he, Nimrod. It says they. They. Is this talking about the Nimrod, the Cushites? Was it the Cushites that did this? And they said one to another, let us do this and that. Notice how they speak even in Genesis chapter 11. They say, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach. No, no, no. It's the verse before. It says, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. Pause right there. They had brick for stone. It's almost like saying that if they had stone, they would have used stone, right? But they had bricks instead of stone. They had slime instead of mortar. Which means that there was a consciousness that they would have built with different materials. But in this particular region, they only had these particular materials. You see? And this is controversial, especially in the Kemetic and the Black Egyptology. Because we like to say that, well, Egypt, Kemet began everything. And civilization did begin with Ethiopia and that region, according to even the Bible, right? But in the later evolution of civilization, you know what I mean? We get a different center of where we could say ancient black people and black culture begins. Because we have Nimrod here, you know what I mean? Building his kingdom, you know what I mean? And notice, it goes on, it doesn't mention anything against Nimrod. What happens is that because of racism, uh, you know what I mean, a lot of Bible, Christian, white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, they spun, they twisted the narrative and said that this was Nimrod that was doing it, right? When, when you read through the whole narrative, it's the, it's the Lord coming down against them. And we know that if Jehovah want to come against him, a particular person, he, can, he does it. We have it elsewhere in the scripture, you know what I mean? Where, you know, with Pharaoh, right? You know, he's talking about a man, you know what I mean? So he has no problem in going against a man, naming a man. But Nimrod is not named in this, right? And in other books, like the book of Adam and Eve, we also see that it wasn't Nimrod with the Tower of Babel. In fact, it was all of the children, you know, like all of the children were a part of it. It seems as though there was a getting together and a building of something by all of the families, you know what I mean? At one point, and then there was this cataclysm with the Lord coming down, and they were scattered. And then after that, right, we get ones like Nimrod, right, building, you know what I mean, building this, this kingdom. Or, or Nimrod builds this kingdom, right, with the other sons of men, and it goes on for a while, and generations later, this tower gets... See, we don't have a time for when the tower comes down. You see what I'm saying? And there had to be a sufficient number of people in the earth. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It had to be a sufficient number. It couldn't have happened right after the flood. It couldn't have happened in the first generation. It couldn't have happened in the second generation. You know? Now when it says, And Cush begat Nimrod, but notice what it says, the sons of Cush was Seba, Havila, Sabta, Rama, Sabteka, and the sons of Rama, right, Sheba and the Dan. And then it says, and Cush begat Nimrod. 
In what order of the sons of Cush was Nimrod begotten? You know what I'm saying? It doesn't tell us. Was he the last? Was he like the baby in the family? Because if he was a baby in the family and people lived for, you know, a good number of years, you know what I'm saying? Then there was already more things going on. People were being born, things happening, you know what I'm saying? Because in order to do things like building a tower, a ziggurat, like they have the ziggurat over there, and a ziggurat does appear to be the first pyramid-like structure. You know, I know ones and ones say that the pyramids go back to the Atlantean age, but it hasn't been sufficiently proven to I. You know what I mean? Some of the theories do point that the pyramids probably existed at a time when there was flooding going on, right? That's sufficient. Could that be, you know, what was built in the first time before the flood? Remember, the Egyptians even talk about the first time. They talk about there was a time before. And it seems if there was something like what the Bible narrates as a flood, there would be a time before. And for ones and ones listening, if you go into your own study, there's studies that really show the similarity, right, of the early Egyptian civilization to certain things in Sumer and Mesopotamia. But here's the good news. So people don't think like they'll do... Some some of the some of the pro blacks be like thinking that what we're saying here, we're trying to say that we we don't have anything great as black people. No. Note that the black people that the that the Babylonian or the Sumer kingdoms were established by black peoples. We we, we with Nimrod. Because Nimrod is the son of Cush. And notice we have Hindus Cush. How we have Hindus Cush way over there, bro? You know what I mean? How we have Hindus Cush way over there. See, they wasn't limited to Africa as we today because of post-white supremacist trauma stress syndrome. Yeah. See, we have all that, so we, we, we kind of huddle up in Africa. We all got to huddle up in Africa. But the ancients were looking at this earth. That means that even on other continents, South and Central America, no doubt our peoples reached there at some time. You know what I mean? And either were the first there or met up with other peoples there. Because they said, whatever water touches sea, and J.A. Rogers said, you'll find Ethiopians there. And when he said Ethiopians, he was looking at it within the historical, scientific context, but also in the biblical narrative, right? That we have Ethiopia as an identifiable place. You know what I'm saying? Being identified in a before the flood sense. And then we get also Ethiopia, Cush, after the flood and we know that the ethiopian kushite civilization does appear right to have very deep roots you know what i'm saying and then its roots link with other parts of the world like hindus kush <laughs> you know what i mean now even though that name was said to be given to the mountains i did i did do my do my research on it right it was given to the mountains later on it doesn't appear to be a very ancient name in that sense, right? But what it does even link is that there is a Cushitic influence over there. And we know Cush links with Ethiopia. You know, whether you want to spell for K or you want to spell for, you know, for C. You know what I mean? But you, if you notice on the map, it kind of points out some of what we have in the Bible, right? And giving kind of a link, you know, to ancient history. You know, where different ones, like the Sabians. Remember the Sabians? Like the Queen of Sheba? Yeah. Right? Notice the Queen of Sheba, right? And here's where we get this whole Afro-Shemitic thing, or Ham-O-Shemitic thing, Ham and Shem, in a sense. Right? Kind of working together and blending together. First we get Sheba, right, from Cush. And then even when we look at the line of Shem, there's a Sheba and a Saba. Because the word itself would have meant something like seven, an oath. You know what I'm saying? The word for seven, oath, and satisfy. Seba and Sheba is not the same word. But we have the sense of seven, an oath, and satisfaction. Like being satisfied. You know what I'm saying? You know? <laughs> so we have, you know, the Cushitic influence in these different regions of the world. Right? 
You know what I'm saying? So it's just important to, and, and let's just recognize that Ham is not the first black man. Oh, that would be a, that would be a good, a good title right there. That, that Ham is not the first black man. Because Christianity, white, you know, people's Christianity, they taught us, they want to make us think that Ham, you know, was the first black man. You know, but Ham was... But is Shem the oldest son? Well, it would appear that Shem, in the order of the Bible, is the oldest son. There is some kind of dispute among among scholars. It's an interesting dispute because ones often, you know, would kind of give their reasonings and they sometimes point to scripture. So it allows us to kind of follow up on their reasonings and maybe even have our own reasoning. You know, we, we might have better information today. But, um, but in spite of that, Noah came from a line of people, according to the book of Enoch, Right, because then he was basically a type of an albino child, you know what I'm saying? Amongst those who were more melanated, it shows that even before the flood, in the first time, you know what I mean, that they were black people on the earth. You see what I'm saying? So we have to get out of this paradigm. The white man tried to push us in the corner that, that our only blackness come from ham. You know what I mean? You got to get off of that. You know, he treating us like we're stupid. And in a sense, we might have been docile, you know what I mean? Because we, we wasn't up on his game, you know? We wasn't up on the evidence. But looking over the evidence now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we can see how the white man just devolved. He devolved these theories, you know, to uphold this, this, this illusion, you know what I mean, of, of white supremacy, you know, because he had lacked history. He lacked real history. Everywhere he went, he began to see black people or people that was not like him. You know what I mean? And he wanted to know where he fit in the world. You know what I'm saying? It's just like when a child grows up, they want to know, like, who, are, who, who am I? You know what I mean? And if they don't know their past, you know, or they don't have any history, and then they meet other people, and everybody else got history and culture, you know, he begins to ask these questions of himself. You know, and then if he recognized, like I mentioned from the very beginning, you know, that, um, you know, um, the white man preferred to say that, you know, he come from, you know, he come from the monkey, you know what I mean? Or the apes, but, but I'm saying this to be, to be kind of funny here too, you know, that the white man want to say that he came from the monkey, you know, instead of saying that he came from the black man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Instead of saying that, see, because then, then if he said that and acknowledged that, you know what I mean? Instead of doing this, this uck ish, he did. You know what I'm saying? There would be a whole different. Be, if he acknowledged that, then he couldn't do and he wouldn't do to us and our ancestors what he did. You know what I'm saying? True. You know what I'm saying? So somehow he got possessed by something. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe an alien. <laughs> yeah, Satan. He got possessed. Satan is an alien. The Nephilim are aliens. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? They're aliens. They don't really belong down here. You know what I'm saying? They, you know, this was, was supposed to be ours, but he got envious and jealous, you know, of our things. And, and like it says about Satan, cast that into Cain. You know what I mean? It seems as though the white man was bearing that, you know, he was bearing that burden there, you know? Mm hmm You know, that, that burden right there. You know what I'm saying? But hopefully ones and ones, you know, can get a better a better context of evolution you know gonna seal this one up right here for momentarily because you know i think i, I and i might want to touch on something else a couple other points came up you know what i'm saying you yes, know sir. in this whole you know just vibes in just vibes in <laughs> just vibes in you know what i mean just vibes in right here um look at that one that i sent you it's the one where it has like the ape evolving to some form of a black man. It's kind of interesting right there. I don't know if you see that one, it's a black and white one, and they're like running, like in a race. Oh, that's okay. And it's interesting because the one at the end is actually is a black man. This is the first one I seen where they had a black man in that evolution thing. You know, like as like like even if that was so, that it evolved from the ape, right? You know, the great ape. You know, into the so-called you could say black man. You know, 
This is a rear one. Yeah, it's a black. Yeah, the one with the running you're talking about? The, the one with the running? Yeah, yeah. The one with the running. So if you zoom in on the man in the front, you can see it's a brother. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the three of them look like brothers right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, much trust to be here. Everything here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the mustache. Yeah, 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 you, you saw that right there. They got the mustache and the beard. You know, ready to get their locks. They're in the locks to, you know, to bust out. You know what I'm saying? So this is one of the rare ones I've seen. Cause a lot of the other ones that even I, I showed the eye and shared with the eye and also the audience and the, those viewers, it always ends up like the ones that are like the apes. They more in their mind will identify with black people as we are now. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And they are the, you know, the, the so-called white man. You see what I'm saying? And this is what made him run around and look for the missing link. Right? And the missing link, right, is basically the black man. <laughs> but he don't want to think of that. He, he prefer to say that he come from, you know, you know, the, you know, the, <laughs> the monkey aka you know the great ape you know what i'm saying rather than to say you know that he came from the black man you know and this is what has to be put before him because then we can really get to the bottom of how the evolution really came about because you know i mean the evolution happens you know what i mean when we go into certain other things so about the albinos talk about even the indians it's interesting because the indian albinos are closest right to the white man the european right um phenotype you know and even connects very much genetically to him the indian albino you know when you look at a african albino though the person that I, indian from india india indian from india not american india india from india thank you thank you thank you yeah india the hindi hindi you know the hindus kush type so it's kind of interesting when we look at it like that right there too, right? Um, because the, the Indians, they testify of um, the ancient ones that they were more like a black civilization until these, these like Caucasians or these whites, right? You know, who were like giants. There's this ancient testimony, you know, among the Indians, like where the caste system came about from. Right, there were these like kind of invaders or gods or whatever they call them, but they identify them to be like, like very like white people, but they were giants. You see what I'm saying? And they began to like mix, and all of those that were mixed with them became like known as a higher caste. You know what I mean? But the ones like what they call the untouchables, you know, the ones that still had that more Ethiopian Cushitic melanization, you know what I'm saying? They were on the bottom. So some say that from this um, legend from India and concerning the ancient Indian-like system is where the earliest known separation based on kind of outer, you know, like skin complexion really occurred, you know what I'm saying? So it's interesting about the possible... Um, like Indo-European, when they say Indo-European, they're saying Hindo. Indo, Indo is short for Indian or Hindu. So when they say Indo-European, you know what I'm saying? That's the link between the European of today and his real roots. You see what I'm saying? When we, when we put things within to the more historical and also genetics and a lot of DNA backs it up as well. And just on a basic level... You know, um, a lot of white people have a, a real attraction to India, even to Indian spirituality. You see what I'm saying? We see the similarity with it, but then we also have our own thing. But a lot of the Europeans, they're attracted to it and adopt it as their thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It becomes their thing. But here, 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 you know what I mean? You know, so, yes, I, Rastafari. Full of full. Full of full. <laughs>